everyone. Welcome to our panel discussion today. My name is Miles. I am the art director from an organization called Cymoscape. And what we do there is we work to support deaf and hard of hearing people and disabled creators. We do a lot of work with folk rehab and virtual reality. We are really excited to have this discussion today about leadership in creativity and virtual reality. So our focus today is going to be on people with disabilities. People who have roles in leadership that are founders, project directors, development, and the people, those people who have also identified with disabilities. So how will we be able to create more inclusive technologies? And this way we, to be able to challenge people and how will we be able to bring inclusivity into our XR technologies. So first, the thing that we're going to do is we're going to introduce ourselves and maybe a brief explanation of your role, what you do, and of course your name. And we will go in order, I think. So Adriana, we'll let you go first. Thank you, Miles. Hello, I'm Adriana Malazzi, founder and CEO of Puffin Innovations. I am a white female with, with ear length dark hair with some grays in it. And I'm a power wheelchair user, and I'm wearing a blue blouse. Um, and we are creating hands free technology uh for people with significant physical disabilities to be able to use mobile devices as well as computers hello my name's ben i'm from london in the uk i'm a deaf video designer and artist i um, created my own vr installation a few years ago which was uh, to give people the opportunity of experiencing deafness. Um, so it was my own personal um, experience. And I work in video design and creative captioning for theatre. So that's looking at creative ways of including text onto a stage um, in theatre. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Chris Hainsworth. I'm a white man, uh, white hair blue jumper and very pink face. And I'm co-founder of Blind Burners. We're a group of blind, partially sighted and sighted artists and performers. Um, we very interested in digital accessibility, in particular um, virtual reality and creator tools. Hi there, I'm Ross. I'm a 3D animator, work as part of the VR Hive and I come from the west coast of Scotland, very nice and uh, sunny Scotland. Um, as a 3D animator, I mostly work in character avatars for our educational uh, games and software as part of the VR Hive with uh, ties into game development, as well as uh, other bits of software used to uh, help educate uh, people in soft skills to do with communication and uh, team management and stuff like that. Great. I am thrilled to learn about you all's work and what and what motivates you all to lead. So I'm going to start asking questions. Um, I identify myself as deaf and low vision, so you will see me leaning towards my screen several times. So the first question is discuss your involvement in bringing inclusivity into XR technologies. And if you could do that in more detail, sort of what you do and how it relates to XR tech, that would be great. Um, so with with my involvement uh, with the VR Hive, 
uh, kind of bringing more uh, inclusivity into XR technologies. It's mostly looking into uh, ways to make people feel more comfortable using uh, our XR experiences. Uh, VR can be uh, difficult at times for people, uh, regardless of uh, their inclusive needs. You know, everyone has varied needs, and obviously we want to make our uh, software, our products, our games, our experiences more available to everyone. So for me, I like to kind of look into ways of making uh, characters more involved, maybe reflecting people of different body shapes and, you know, different things that may affect the character's movement. But I'm also involved in uh, looking into ways we can increase our actual inclusive design, uh, looking at um, ways we can uh, improve our design to cater to individuals who may have uh, neurodivergent needs, who may have uh, low or impaired vision, may have hearing, difficult, uh, hearing difficulties, and just a wide range of, of different things. So that's mostly my involvement. I just want to bring uh, kind of more uh, inclusive, uh, more inclusive uh, features to our apps through visuals, but also the actual mechanics and how our products work. Wonderful. Chris, would you like to explain how you all are using inclusivity to XR technologies? Yeah. So during lockdowns in 2020, uh, we hosted quite wild creative parties online on Zoom. And our focus there was on describing anything of importance that was purely visual, describing or sonifying it, allowing us all to connect. And last year in 2021, we built our own world in Altspace VR, which is Microsoft's VR platform, which is not compatible with screen readers. And so to make a point, we built our own camp anyway, and we built an art gallery to showcase art and photography of visually impaired photographers. We built a temple of accessibility, again, to draw attention to various aspects of digital technology that are not compatible with screen readers. And then this year, our, our focus right now is we're putting together some physical meetups, first in London, and we hope we'll extend it across the UK and to cities around the world, where, we'll, um, it's where we hopefully will provide virtual reality and a range of gaming as accessible as we can make them to people who are visually impaired. And right now that requires a lot of human intervention. So we have to be very cautious about what, what we what we offer. But the idea is to create an environment where people can come together and have as good as possible first experience of VR as a visually impaired person and also get into games. And we hope to kind of foster that really quite geeky environment so people can come together and engage more deeply in virtual reality and hopefully we will layer in mentoring and those kind of projects so that the people who come as their interest deepens can um, get picked up by games companies and VR companies to develop their careers. That is so cool. I am looking forward to that and hearing more about it. And I love, I'm thrilled that that is opening up those, you're, you're opening up those doors. Thank you. So, I really was interested in, uh, and I know Ben, I love that you're working on a hybrid, Chris. Ben, what are you all doing? Hello. Um, yeah, so as I'm sort of a designer and an artist, I my projects vary all the time. Uh, the main reason I'm here is because of a VR installation I made called Simple Misunderstanding in 2017. And this was a sort of experience of being deaf and it toured amongst music festivals in the UK. And the whole point was to sort of educate um, those who have no experience of deafness and put them in scenarios where uh, it was either a very noisy environment and you couldn't hear a particular person. Uh, it would be complete silence with lots of visual imagery. And that one would be the need to uh, face someone while you're looking at them. And uh, if they move away from you, the sound levels would change and become distorted. So it's sort of a, 
uh, an awareness installation art piece, as I describe it. Um, and it was very well received and uh, it's very fortunate enough to have the ability to build that and tour with it. Since then, I've been looking into creative captioning, which is uh, how captions are beyond access and they're a creative part of um, whatever the platform is. So primarily I've been looking at theatre and video projection, but I'm now moving into uh, XR, so how words can be creatively included in a VR environment or an AR environment um, appearing around sort of objects and people. Nice. I love that. That is amazing. And with the captions, you know, as you know, it is, of course is an access, an accessibility tool, but being able to marry that idea of having the creativity of it is going to be very, very interesting. Um, I'm really interested in creative captions as well. That is very, very cool. Okay, Adriana, what has your involvement been like with supporting inclusivity for XR technology? Um, so for myself, I physically can't use controllers, right, uh, that come with VR and AR headsets. Um, and so we are using our um, hands-free solution that we've already developed and just changing the form factor, incorporating it in um, head-mounted displays to give access uh, to people like myself who can't use those devices right now. Um, and for, I experienced riding a roller coaster for the first time by using a headset. Um, and at the time when I tried it, I had to have an able-bodied person set it up for me uh, because obviously I couldn't control the hand control. Um, and that really excited me because it gave me an opportunity to experience something that A, I've never experienced before and B, that I never would be able to experience physically because I'm not able to sit in a roller coaster, in an actual roller coaster. Um, so to be able to give access to people that, you know, similar to myself, that can't do those things or travel as easily and, and experience the world um, is what really is motivating for me um, and excites me. Wow, Adriana, I am so thrilled to see these creative new solutions for people who typically can't use VR. I'm excited to learn more about this. All right, we're going to go back to question number two, and I would like to take a moment to remind everyone to try to keep their answers brief in order to allow everyone an opportunity to respond. Question number two says, what excites you the most about seeing these new tools developed in VR technology for the new generation ahead? So um, what excites me most is the creative, the innovative and the economic impact that will flow from disabled authorship. Um, in, the, in, the, in our particular area, working with visually impaired people, I'm absolutely convinced that the most creative, playful, video game, game designers alive today, uh, many of them are amongst the visually impaired community. And there are again, there are video games that we just can't imagine right now um, from all, all set, all, all, from all communities of disabled communities. I'm really excited to see what's gonna come from that. Personally for myself, um, when it comes to like what excites me the most about making this more accessible to individuals is just my belief as a whole that um, everyone uh, is diverse in their own nature, whether they have um, needs that are obviously quite great or minor needs. I feel that 
bring in more inclusive design uh, and accessibility through apps and stuff like that, whether it's like physical things like hardware or more subtle things such as uh, the way the software interacts. I think stuff like this uh, is important. Um, and I think that's why it is extremely important as we go forward to, to think about that more. Because in the past, as someone who grew up with being a bit neurodivergent and stuff and software not always being, uh, you know, so designed for people like me in mind, I think it's really important to consider that everyone is diverse and we need to go forward with that line of thinking. What excites me the most is we're still in a fairly new industry and a lot of conventions that we may have in access are still being reworked and explored. So we're able to sort of break new territory and explore new sort of creative decisions when it comes to access that we may have not considered before. Um, and particularly, I'm also excited to see lots of um, a variety of people with, you know, different disabilities who are now actually involved at the heart of these decisions. Um, so I'm really keen to see where that takes us. Okay, fingers crossed you can see me clearly. This is Miles speaking again, and I'm excited to see the value of deaf people having the opportunity to lead the decision-making process in this space. So I certainly agree with that. And now I would like to turn it over to Adriana. What excites you the most about this? As a lifetime AT user from the early to mid eighties, um, I've seen technology evolve. And what excites me about this is that it will open up educational and employment opportunities for people with disabilities. Um, I've heard that you can design your own workspace in a virtual space and make it, you know, as you like it and what works best for you. Um, so the impact of that, of really that personalization and really optimizing your productivity um, as someone with a disability to gain all those opportunities um, in employment um, and education. Uh, I think it's, it's really great for this new generation. And I wish I had that when I was younger because the, the, the possibilities are endless right now with this technology. This is Miles here. We have been chatting about this topic for about an hour now, and uh, we only have a short amount of time left. However, I do have one last question uh, before we open it up for the Q&A. The final question is, what are some of the challenges that lie ahead in the future, and what steps can we take now and today to prepare us for that future as it relates to the accessibility of XR technology. And for this one, I will turn it over to Ben to start us off. It's Ben here. So I think one of the challenges that we have is, um, as I say earlier, we're making new conventional rules and it's making sure those are the right rules that we set out and what they are. Um, so in my case with captioning, it's about what is the level of access and creativity and making sure that we are still accessible and that we don't become too creative and then it loses its main meaning um, because we don't want to, we want to still cater to the deaf um, audience in that area. I think that's the biggest challenge at the moment. Um, and equally, I still feel we need to keep deaf voices at the heart of what we do. Um, so that means, you know, leadership and people working on projects, we should always have a deaf voice and deaf representation um, because we're making work for them. And um, that's the best place to be. I agree. Thank you. And uh, now I would like to turn it over to Ross. So personally, I think some of the challenges that lie ahead is that we could maybe get a bit too bogged down in trying to meet so many needs that we actually could maybe uh, 
reached none of the needs. One thing we kind of talk about a lot when we're designing some of our inclusive features is kind of having a look at the things that we can reach versus the things that we can't reach. Because unfortunately, sometimes we're unable to reach absolutely everything, even though we'd absolutely love to. We don't, we're not perfect human beings. We can't work 24 hours a day. Uh, we have other stuff we need to attend to in our work. So what we need to kind of think about is just being honest with ourselves and understanding that it will be hard to make these needs, but doing that at a very early stage, whether it be designing a game or something like that or hardware, really considering the limitations and the difficulties that lie ahead, being honest with our abilities as individuals and, and team members and seeing what we can do uh, to achieve that. Okay, so one of the things that we wanted to do here, uh, really I wanna make you all think about the challenges that we have now, our experiences and how we can improve them and how we can focus on inclusivity with four people with disabilities and the world of XR tech. So I think I'd like to hand this to Adriana. What are the challenges do you think? So I think it's really important for developers to design with accessibility in mind to begin with. Um, and I think that's a challenge. Um, and as Ben mentioned, if, you know, having some sort of guidelines and rules um, for developers to really have that in mind, because if, if they develop with accessibility in mind, they're developing for all people, right? Um, people at any point in their lives can become disabled. Um, and the aging population right now, baby boomers are, are aging. Um, and so I think that's a challenge. It's just making people aware in general of why it's important to design and make it as inclusive as possible um, and that's a challenge everywhere right like it's not just for ar vr but in general we we face this all the time um and i know i'm preaching to the to the choir right now but that that is a a, a major challenge in general when people are creating these mainstream products and even if they do have accessibility built in it's never highlighted right most of us have to dig deep when we're when we get a piece of technology or when we want to, to try a piece of technology um and we have to dig deep to to see if we can even use it and once we learn that we can use it, why isn't that highlighted? Why isn't that part of the mainstream advertisement or advertising of such technology? Um, so, so bringing disability and access to the forefront in general, I, I think is, is a challenge all around and not just exclusively to VR and AR tech. I'm going to say, the, so there are lots of really interesting and fairly difficult challenges that I suspect are being talked about elsewhere. Um, one that particularly interests us at Blind Burners is the accessibility object model and figuring out how to provide uh, meaningful descriptions of a 3D environment uh, to a person who's visually impaired. Um, but other than that, to me, it's about budgets. And as we begin our work of engaging with tech companies and persuading them to fix things that should have been fixed a long time ago, um, it's, it's um, yeah, there's so much that could be fixed with appropriate budgets. And it, and I'm speaking actually as someone whose day job is, as a CFO, I, my day job is finance. I'm really convinced that investing in inclusive design and in fixing some of these things that have been broken for so long will be just by far and away the biggest return that any of these companies could have. Um, and so really, 
yeah, the challenges in communicate is in understanding these organizations and why they're um, not changing as, as quickly as we'd like and engaging and inspiring them to so that the, the design teams get the budgets that they need uh, to like rad radically in increase the number of accessibility product managers. Ultimately, from what we've seen where change is happening, it's when companies invest in those sort of roles, people have got um, got authority and budgets to, to make change happen much more quickly. Thank you so much. This is Miles. And I want to thank all of you all for joining this panel today. I know this, you, we love having an opportunity to chat with each other. Um, and I know that there will be a and a so I really want to thank you for your time. Um, so if you want to look at, I really want people to be able to look at your leadership and we really respect what you all are doing in your individual companies. And you are making the world better. Thank you so much for your time. Oh,